Let's go to the gastric bypass. Now. So the gastric bypass is what's called a combination surgery. What we do here is we create a small reservoir, the gastric pouch, and we use an intestinal reconstruction called a Ruin Y, okay, this is kind of like a letter Y, to create a change in absorption, it's called malabsorption. And what that does is it, it changes, changes the metabolism of the patient, okay? This is our society statement on the gastric bypass. 60 to 70% excess body weight loss in a year. With, at that time, we quoted the operative mortality of 0.5%. Uh, we actually, in the later slides, I'm gonna show you the up-to-date numbers, which, which are better. Um, and so that's just sort of a, 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 just a nice overall perspective of what this, we were telling people in the society about seven years ago. So what are the advantages of gastric bypass? Well, we consider this surgery the gold standard surgery. What does that mean, gold standard? Something's the gold standard. Well, the gold standard means that it's the most effective surgery for weight loss, and it means that the effect of bypass on the other medical problems, is, it, it's very effective for that. So in terms of combination of weight loss and the effectiveness um, of uh, and the effect on the other medical comorbidities, it's the gold standard. It's, it's really the only surgery that's been shown to decrease mortality. We'll talk about that. That means that people show that people live longer after surgery. And there's a couple other important papers that I want to show you that have only been done in gastric bypass patients. This surgery is very much a metabolic surgery. It was probably the first of the very well-studied metabolic operations where you also get that decreased effect of that ghrelin, that appetite hormone, and this very beneficial effect for type 2 diabetics. Now, the interesting thing about gastric bypass is when you look at some of this basic science and you look at the way it works. So there's a, there's a theory, a very commonly held belief, that the defect in a diabetic patient who's morbidly obese is here, in what's called the antrum, pylorus, and duodenum. Okay? And what happens here is that for whatever reason, glucose, sugar, that people ingest if they're morbidly obese, it's not reaching the bottom of the small intestine where the colon is. And as a result, there's a switch that's not going off and that GLP-1, which is the good anti-diabetic hormone, which helps the body have more sensitivity to its own insulin and also helps the body produce more insulin, is not being turned on. So what happens right at surgery, when we do gastric bypass, is that glucose now bypasses this defective area by going this way, and the switch is turned on. So what we see is this so-called on-table remission of type 2 diabetes, and we've seen this for years. I mean, this was first described in the 1980s in a paper titled, What Do You Know of a Surgical Procedure That Actually Cures Diabetes by Walter Pores. So we see our type 2 diabetics normalize their sugars without insulin before they have any weight loss while they're in the hospital. And we see this very commonly, okay? And then there's also significant uh, durability of weight loss. Yes, go ahead now. Okay, go back to the picture of the room and line. Uh-huh. What happens to the bypass portion of the stomach? It's still there. We don't do anything to it. It doesn't just get tossed no, out? No, no, no. We still, it they, they, no, it has blood. Far away in no, there? no, it doesn't. <laughs> we don't do anything to it. We just okay. bypass it. The blood supply is all still feeding it. It's still making uh, secretions and hormones and, and, and whatnot. Yes? Okay. I've also heard um, from other sources that this doesn't always correct your diabetes. Is that true? So we'll get to the data. Okay. No, that's exactly true. There's, a, there's almost invariably a significant improvement, but remission is, well, I'll show you the, st the stats. It's about 85%. So, but it's about as good an operation as we have for diabetes. And in fact, one of the most exciting things, this metabolic idea is really started with gastric bypass is the idea in other countries, not yet in the US, although there are some centers that are studying it, is the idea of operating on lower BMI diabetics and curing them with surgery or putting them into remission with surgery. So not treating diabetes the way we think about diabetes as a medical disease, performing surgery on type 2 diabetics to cure it. And that's going on in South America and Europe um, and Australia and other countries. And it's not here yet in the US, but it will be. So that's the idea of metabolic surgery. The disadvantage of gastric bypass is this surgery is, is more uh, anatomically involved than banding and sleeve, which we've talked about so far, so there can be more short-term complications. There's slightly higher mortality than the sleeve, which is 1.9 per 1,000 at 2 per 1,000 with gastric bypass compared to one in a thousand with the band. But you see that we made a lot of significant progress in 10 or 12 years when you look at mortality of one in a thousand 
to, to, to you know, uh, uh, one, sorry, two to one in a thousand to two in a thousand. I mean, that's not a wide spread of mortality data. The malabsorptive component of the gastric bypass means that you have to take vitamins and mineral supplementation because of that bypass. Important things can't be extracted from food anymore, so they have to be supplemented uh, externally. There's a higher incidence of short-term risk, which we talked about. And this is a procedure that requires, and just like the sleeve gastrectomy and the duodenal switch, all these staple procedures mean that they require more surgical skill. So the surgeons need a little bit more experience, and their learn learning curve tends to be longer. That's what makes them sometimes disadvantageous to other surgeons who just want to maybe pick up a band or something like that. 